Most people don't know how to craft good prompts for ChatGPT, and as a result, they get useless, robotic, and generic sounding results. So they dismiss ChatGPT because they don't know how to get the juicy outputs. And in my opinion, they're a hundred percent missing out. In this video, I'm sharing nine tips to get better results with ChatGPT than 98% of other people. So let's get into it. Tip number one is to be specific. Otherwise you're going to end up with vague, generic, robotic sounding answers. This is one of the biggest mistakes people make with ChatGPT, and that they are not specific enough in the questions they are asking. So for example, a bad question would be something generic, like how do I grow my business? And if I ask ChatGPT that and get it to generate an answer, it's going to be very vague and general, and it's not going to be very helpful if that is what I'm trying to do. So instead, let's be way more specific in the question that we are asking in the prompt we are crafting for ChatGPT. So instead, let's do a more specific prompt. That is something like what copywriting strategies can I use to grow my coaching business using Twitter? So we are much more specific and this is going to give us better answers. The advice ChatGPT is spitting out for this prompt is much more specific and much more actionable than it gave me in the first place. Another example, don't do this. Don't write, write me a story about a dog who goes on an adventure. This is kind of generic and I'm probably going to get a very generic response for that. Instead, I could do a more specific prompt like, Write me an epic and suspenseful story about a lost dog who finds his way home through dangerous and unfamiliar wilderness. Now this is going to give me a much more specific story than the first one. Tip number two is to instruct ChatGPT in the tone and way you want it to answer you. If we want ChatGPT to come back to us with a more human response. To get that to happen, try including this at the end of your prompt. So write in a conversational style as if you're explaining something to a friend. This will help you avoid that generic and formal tone that ChatGPT tends to default to. So instead of typing in, how does nuclear fusion work, which is going to give us this very professional scientific sounding answer. But if we wanted to get it to answer us like a real person would, we could try amending that. How does nuclear fusion work with right in a conversational style as if you were explaining it to a friend. So you can see right away, it is approaching this in a more friendly, approachable manner. And I'm not going to read this whole thing because it's really long, but if you scroll down and actually read it, it explains nuclear fusion in a much more approachable manner. Tip number three is to do some role playing by giving chat GPT a specific role to play. In order to do that, you want to add something like this to the end of your prompt. So answer as if you were a insert specific person here. So that could be a doctor, a lawyer, a, an editor, scientist, what have you, or worded a little differently, pretend you are a specific role. A really good example I saw of somebody doing this on Twitter the other day is an entrepreneur who had a client that owed them over a hundred thousand dollars in payment for services that his company had rendered for them. And after five days of emailing them and getting after them, they were ghosting them. And this guy wanted to get paid for his work without having to involve paying a lawyer to do that for him. So we thought, why don't I try and see if ChatGPT can write me an email to get after these people and scare them into paying the money that they owed. Here's the prompt from Greg Eisenberg on Twitter. And the prompt was pretend you work in the finance department and your job is to collect payment from clients. Draft a scary email that gets XYZ client to pay $109,000 of services rendered, but hasn't responded to five emails. Their invoices are five months overdue. This is the prompt Greg used with ChatGPT and took what it spit out and emailed that to his client with a couple of little fixes and it worked. The person, that company, actually ended up getting back to them and paying off what they owed. This is a really great example of telling ChatGPT to pretend you are in a specific role and then answer as if you are that person. It can be really, really useful. And similar to this, tip number four is to get ChatGPT to answer in the style of a specific famous person. This can be useful for a number of things. So in the first example, the prompt you would use to get this kind of output would be right in the style of insert prominent writer, prominent person, such as Seth Godin, Gary Vee, 
Stephen King and amend that to the end of your prompt. So some examples of this, write a tweet about how getting on TikTok is important if you want to succeed as an entrepreneur in 2023, write in the style of Gary Vaynerchuk. And so this is what it spits out. So attention entrepreneurs, if you're not on TikTok in 2023, you're missing out on massive opportunities. And I can almost hear this in Gary V's voice. It might not be exactly what you want, so you can hit the regenerate responses button and it'll redo it again. And you can get a couple different variations on that. This can be really useful for things like writing blog posts or social media posts. A second example, and one I've used myself to generate ideas for YouTube is come up with five viral YouTube video titles on the topic of whatever you want. So in this example, let's do how to get the most veggies out of your garden in the style of Mr. Beast. Chat GPT is really taking its time here, but look what it spit out. I planted a thousand seeds in my garden. You won't believe how many veggies I got. I spent 24 hours gardening and ended up with a record breaking harvest and turning my garden into a veggie wonderland, the ultimate guide. These all have that bombastic over the top, hypey type of title that Mr. Beast would use in his videos, but they've applied it to a gardening topic, which is really, really cool. And you can use this for all sorts of things. If there are writers or well-known famous people in your industry, you can use ChatGBT to output things in a similar style as those people. Tip number five is to use explain like I'm five mode. So the purpose of explain like I'm five is obviously to break down a complex topic and explain it in the simplest manner possible that even a five-year-old could understand. To get ChatGPT to output in this way, you wanna to add to your prompt, write as if you were explaining to a five-year-old or explain to me like I'm five, add that on to the end of your prompt. An example of how to do this versus not, explain how genetics work to give a person brown eyes versus blue eyes. And if I type this in, ChatGPT is gonna give me a probably pretty scientific wordy response. But if instead I do explain how genetics works to give a person brown eyes versus blue eyes, right as if you're explaining to a five-year-old, I'm gonna get a much more accessible, simple answer. So you can see the output that ChatGPT spits out is still pretty long, but it is written in simple language directed towards a child. If I wanted to actually break that down even further, I could amend it with explain it again in five sentences or less. Tip number six is to use ChatGPT to summarize long form content. One of the most useful ways to use ChatGPT is to copy and paste some long form piece of content, whether that is a blog post or a scientific paper, paste that into ChatGPT and ask it to summarize it in a simple way. And I wanna remind you to be specific in your instructions when you do this. So what do you want out of that summary? So for example, you could use the following prompt, write a one sentence summary of the following using simple language a fifth grader could understand. So that is kind of combining the explain like I'm five mode with summarize mode. As I said, you can be very specific in the way you want ChatGPT to summarize things. So instead, maybe I wanna tell it, write a bullet list summary of the following article. So instead of an article, I'm going to just pop in this explanation of genetics of blue versus brown eyes and ask it to summarize that into a bullet list. So I've done that here and this is what ChatGPT spits out. It takes the main points of this large segment of text and breaks it down into a few points. As you can imagine, this can be really useful for things like studying or condensing long form content into something you might wanna use in say a tweet instead. Tip number seven is to give ChatGPT specific examples. And this is gonna help you get ChatGPT to answer you in a specific way or format that you want. So for example, you can get ChatGPT to answer you in a Q and A style. Here's two different ways I could do that. First example, let's do a Q and A. How many days are there in a year? I give an example of an answer, which is 365. Then I ask the next question, how many hours are there in a day? And I leave the answer section blank. And then I put that in so ChatGPT can answer it. And it's gonna try to answer it in the similar way as I did in the example I gave. So I just gave a numerical answer and that's how it answered. But maybe I wanted ChatGPT to answer me in full sentences. So instead, I would format my prompt like this. So same questions, except I answered it as there are 365 days in a year and 366 in a leap year, instead of just putting 365. So if I enter that in, ChatGPT is going to answer me with a sentence. So see, there are 24 hours in a day, instead of simply saying 24. So this is a good way to get ChatGPT to answer you in the specific way that you want. This isn't confined to just Q and A style. I could say, get ChatGPT to respond with say, in tweet 
format. Let's try this one. So I can write in a prompt of write me a tweet in 280 characters on the topic of how to make 10 K a month on YouTube. Here's a good example of how I would like you to format it. And then I give an example tweet from somebody else that I saw. So it has a sentence and then a bullet list, and then it wraps it up with a couple of points. So let's see what ChatGPT spits out. And it does a pretty good job. So behind every successful YouTuber making 10 K a month is ignored video ideas, crippling self doubt, worries about views and subscribers, failed channel strategies. So by using this kind of prompt and giving an example of how I want it to output, I can get very specific in what I can get ChatGPT to generate for me. Do keep in mind though, that ChatGPT isn't very good with numbers. So just because I specified, I wanted it to be 280 characters doesn't mean that this is exactly 280 characters. It might be more, it might be less. It tends to know roughly how much that is, but it doesn't, it's not, Exact. So keep that in mind. Tip number eight is to give ChatGPT formatting instructions. This will help you get answers in exactly the format that you want. So similar to when we were giving examples to ChatGPT, we can also just specify the format we want it to output without giving any examples. You could ask it to output in bullet points, in short paragraphs, in Q and A style, in headings, followed by paragraphs, whatever it is, you can specify that in your prompt. So some examples, can you give me some tips for improving my productivity while working from home? Please format your answer in bullet points. So it's going to do that and give me some ideas formatted in bullet points. If I wanted to get a Q and a style response, I could do this. So here's another prompt example. I want to know what artists struggle with in their daily work, write some questions. I might ask to find this out and give me answers as if you were an artist answering the questions in their own words. And it does exactly what I asked it for. So here's the question I could ask. What is the biggest challenge you face when starting a new project? And then the answer, it answers it as if it was an artist answering that question in their own words. This can be useful for things like if you have an online business, if you're trying to find out things like what are the pain points of my audience and how would they respond if I ask these questions, including the format of the response you want in your prompt is super useful. Tip number nine is to tell ChatGPT to explain its reasoning, show its work. Now we've all had to do this in school at some point and it is a pain in the ass. Luckily you can get ChatGPT to do this for you now. So the prompt you need to get it to do this, ask your question and then tack onto the end, explain your reasoning or explain step-by-step step how you came to that answer. So for example, if I make $50,000 per year, pay 25% in tax and save the rest, how long will it take me to save a million dollars? Explain your reasoning step by step. Let's see what it generates. If I had put this without explaining your reasoning step by step, it might just spit out the number value of how long it would take me to save a million dollars. But I've asked it to show its work, to show me step by step how it comes to that conclusion. So it's going to do that. So you can see it reasons that if I make this much and my taxes are this, that means I pay this much in taxes and I'm left with this much each year. So it's showing me the reasoning behind how it got there. And this can be really useful if you are trying to learn something new. I know there's some people out there that are trying to learn how to code by using ChatGPT. It'll get ChatGPT to teach them something and then maybe what it teaches them isn't super clear. So you can clarify and get it to explain step-by-step step how it came to this answer and it will show you how it did that. So this can be really useful. And I really believe AIs like this are going to change the way that we learn in the future and you can get started right now. Keeping these tips in mind when you're using ChatGPT is gonna help you get better results than the vast majority of people. And this skill is going to be so important moving forward. As these AI tools get better and new versions come out, your ability to use them effectively is going to put you so much farther ahead compared to your competition in so many different ways that we haven't even thought of yet. By learning these skills now, you're really positioning yourself to capitalize during this period when majority of people are hesitating to embrace these new ways of doing things. So if you want to steal these prompts without having to come back and reference this video, I've packaged them all into a convenient PDF cheat sheet that you can download and reference whenever you're using ChatGPT. And you can grab that for free at the link in the description below. But that is it for this video, guys. I want to thank you for sticking it out. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up, hit subscribe and share it with a friend. That would really, really help me out. Otherwise, if you're ready to learn more about the future, whether that's crypto, or AI and ways that we can adapt and prepare ourselves for all of the crazy changes, then check out one of these videos next. And I will see you guys next time.